could you just to continue on the, your last thought there? The, the Quinnipiac poll that came out earlier this week kind of backed you up on that. Forty-seven percent of the voters said that they don't think that the governor can relate to their problems, but yet fifty-one percent of the voters approve of his job performance. Why is there a disconnect there? Well, you know, I, I don't get too much into the into the, into the weeds. I think of, of polling questions because. They can get skewed very easily depending how a polling question is asked and the order that it's asked in. Um, I do think that one of the most basic things that a public official can do is relate to regular people and have policies that the average person in Ohio uh, feels are, are supportive of them and, and, and that's where he's been dropping the ball. Look, you go back to 2010 and you have, you have John Kasich telling people he's going to cut their taxes. Now, he did cut income taxes, but he never told people that he was going to finance it. Back in 2010, never told people he was going to finance it by cuts to K-12 through education, cuts to local government fund, or increasing their sales taxes. And so when people start to feel the effects of those things, they start saying, okay, I liked what I heard before, but now you have basically what I would call buyer's remorse. You have people saying... Um, now that I've seen that most of the benefits are going to a very small group of people, I don't feel like his policies are on my side. And that's just a really fundamental question that every voter asks themselves before they go in a voting booth. And I, and I do think it's reflected in the poll. Not just that the, the answer to that poll, or that polling question, but the fact that he's consistently been in the low, low 40s over and over again. I mean, there's been some polls, I was ahead of him in one poll. Polls go up and down, they're going to keep going up and down. But he's consistently in the low 40s. And I think the reason is, is because when you get elected to office, in the first year or so, people make a judgment about whether you, you kind of have their back or whether you don't. And I think his first year in office, it was real clear what his priorities were. I think he's going to try to shuffle them a little bit right before the election, but I think there's a pretty strong impression of what he's all about. So to follow up on that, Ed, on the, on the Q poll results, there were some good numbers in there for the governor. There were some good, good numbers in there for you as well. Uh, you're only five points behind, but 70% of the folks that they talk to really don't know who you are. 46% um, of the folks said that he deserves to be reelected again, but 42%, 42, only 42% said he doesn't. So that's below 50. Now that Charlie Earl's on the ballot, is that, a, is that a good thing for you? I think it's a good thing for Charlie Earl. I mean, uh, look, I think I could beat the governor if it was one-on-one. -on -one. I think I could beat him in a three-way race. Uh, uh, the polls indicate the, the, that I've seen, I, I, think, um, I think Mr. Earl tends to average around 6% of the vote. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a conservative. He is a fiscal conservative. He's more consistently fiscally conservative than Governor Kasich is. Uh, and he polls uh, fairly well among some people that agree with the kind of Tea Party fiscal conservative views. Uh, you know, I'll let other people figure out who that's going to help or who it's not going, who it's not going to help. Uh, I'll tell you in terms of in terms of the governor's numbers. Let me put it this way: I've seen my own numbers in my own county, which is about 10 percent of the state. If my reelection number against any opponent was 43 percent, uh, I wouldn't have a lot of confidence. My reelection number when we did polling before I ever got in this race was over 60 percent. And I, and again, I think the reason is is when you come into office, people give you a chance to see what you're all about. You have a honeymoon period for about a year, and you say, what, what does this person stand for? And that's when they make their decision. And that, that, that kind of frames usually the rest of your, your term in office. And the governor's first year was characterized by Senate Bill 5, first and foremost, cuts to a local government fund, which led to a lot of tax increases, and uh, cuts, cuts to education. And that is, a, that is an overwhelming impression that people still have in their minds. Um, I would rather be at 38% and have uh, of the vote, vote right now and have most people not know who I am yet than have most, the vast majority of people know who I am like they know Governor Kasich and most of them saying we don't want him anymore. That's, that's why when I said the other day he's going to need all the money he's raised is because people have had an opportunity to sample this product and they're lining up in the return aisle. And I don't think that's a good sign for him. Doesn't mean the election's over, but it means it's going to be a very competitive election.